they made put a birthday hat on his head and and sang God bless America to him. I mean, the, if you're looking at the, they told him to bark like a dog. They told him that he was lower than a dog. I mean, it it, it goes on and on and on. You people have to see these transcripts to believe it. And the fact that there were psychologists who were advising on this program is, uh, I, if if the APA doesn't think that's worthy of taking a look at, then I I don't know much about the, I don't know much about the APA, but it makes me really wonder about it. The APA is the largest association of psychologists in the world, almost 150,000 psychologists. How does the APA's stance on involvement uh, compare to the American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association? Well, see, I mean, ever since World War II, during which the Nazis subverted the medical profession in the most horrendous ways. There, there have been ethical codes passed about what role doctors should play in this. There's, there's, the, doctors are supposed to first do no harm, and all, all scientists are supposed to first do no harm. And, you know, I've interviewed a number of, of uh, s scientists in this book who, who say that, you know, in particular, there's a responsibility for psychologists to use their knowledge in good ways because they have such skills in understanding people's psyches. They really understand how to break people down as well as they do how to fix them up. And, you know, used in the wrong way, it's a powerful tool to really hurt someone. We're going to go to break, then come back to our guest, Jane Mayer. Her new book is out, The Dark Side, the inside story of how the war on terror turned into a war on American ideals. And if you'd like a copy of today's show, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. Stay with us. Simone White here in our studios, uh, the Firehouse Studios in Chinatown in New York City. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Our guest is Jane Mayer. Her new book is The Dark Side, the inside story of how the war on terror turned into a war on American ideals. She's a staff writer for The New Yorker magazine. You know, may know her for her pieces leading up to this book, really a compilation of that research. But on this issue of Mitchell Jessen, of this Psycholog this uh, firm of psychologists in Spokane, Washington. What more do you know about them, and who is Jessen? Uh, well, I think from what I've understood that they're both Mormons. Um, they're both people who worked as advisors to the military SEER school. Uh, they're, they're training people who are in train their backgrounds in training the military to withstand torture, and somehow they became advisors on how to inflict it. It's. Um, Again, something that I think that it would be really interesting to see congressional hearings on, because reporters have hit a lot of dead ends in trying to figure out who they are, what their role was. They're contractors to the CIA. They're not um, in. Uh, they're not full-time employees of the CIA. A lot of questions remain. Um, it might take subpoenas to get some answers. Um, it's interesting a former APA president is involved, although it's said that these two men um, are not members of the APA. Uh, Steve Reisner, a New York psychoanalyst, is now one of, uh, got the top number of nominating votes to be president of the APA this year, and he's the chief dissident, one of the chief dissidents who have fought the, um, who have fought for a moratorium or a ban on involvement in course of interrogation. So we'll see what happens. The annual meeting is going to be taking place in Boston in August, and the vote, I think, is by mail in, by email in uh, 
uh, something like October. But I wanted to ask you, Jane Mayer, um, about Scott McClellan. One of the many former Bush administration officials who's spoken out about torture has been, yes, the former White House press secretary. This is what Scott McClellan had to say during a recent interview for an ABC News podcast. But when I went out and said that we do not torture, uh, we, you know, that, that uh, we adhere to our international treaties and so forth, I was relying on what information was be give, being given to me. Now, looking back on that, I hold a very different view when I know today that we were engaged in waterboarding and some other harsh interrogation methods, and I would have never made those comments from the podium had I known exactly what uh, was happening in some of those settings. Um, whether or not it was illegal is a, is a matter for other people to address, but uh, I could not say honestly today that, uh, that this administration uh, does not uh, believe in torture or does not engage in torture. Now, people within the White House continue to believe that it doesn't, it's not tantamount to torture. Uh, I just hold a different view today on that subject. Well, you know, he's joining a, a, gr a growing list of uh, administration officials, former administration officials, who are now admitting that what they were doing was torturing. You've got um, Richard Armitage, who was the deputy, deputy secretary of state and a combat veteran from Vietnam, and he said recently that I am ashamed we're even having this, co this conversation. Of course, waterboarding is torture. You've got um, um, the, the uh, Ridge, the former Homeland Security Secretary, Tom Ridge, came out and said waterboarding is torture. Mike McConnell, who's currently the head of the uh, um, the Homeland, the uh, National Intelligence Directorate, said if it was done to me, I would think it was torture. Um, you know, it's it's becoming harder and harder, I think, to defend these tactics as not being torture. You've got the, as we've discussed earlier, the Red Cross saying this is torture. You've got the entire world basically saying it's torture. You've got the United States law saying it was torture up until 9/11. And why are they still saying? Why is the Attorney General still saying it's not torture to waterboard someone? Well, because the consequences of acknowledging that this is torture are really serious. It's a serious crime, and it and there are no kinds of excuses for torturing people under the Convention Against Torture. It's an absolute law. It says you can't torture in wartime, you can't torture for national security reasons. There, it's, it's one of the rare laws that has no escape clauses. So if they admit that this is torture, they're in hot water. I saw John Yu, the UC Berkeley professor, law professor, um, uh, at the Aspen Ideas Festival. Someone quietly said they should indict, not invite. Um, but what about the battle within the Justice Department around this? Well, I mean, it was, if you go back and look, and what I've tried to do in the dark side is, is take all the, the, the facts and put them back in order so you, people can understand this as a chapter of history, one great big story. And it basically begins right after 9-11 with a handful of lawyers in the Justice Department reinterpreting the laws in order to justify these programs. And specifically, John Yu, in some of his memos... His role, his uh, position? He, oh, he is uh, the deputy director of the Office of Legal Counsel in the Justice Department. So he's the number two in the office that basically advises the executive branch on what's legal and what's not. He becomes the go-to lawyer for the, the most uh, aggressive bunch of um, the officials in the White House, which Basically, it begins with Vice President Cheney, Vice President Cheney's lawyer, um, and a handful of lawyers in the uh, White House Counsel's office who want to do go to the go to the limit on um, being incredibly aggressive against terrorists and and be able to basically take the gloves off, as they say. So John Yu reinterprets the laws. He does warn almost from the very beginning, though, that if you read his memos carefully, that there might be some criminal problems with this. He just lets them know in a little subclause somewhere in these memos, and then meanwhile says that if they cite national security, the president is, stands above the laws, and he can just say that if torture is necessary, it's then legal. And yet you said at the beginning of this broadcast that President Bush was personally advised about this stepping over the line. Well, beginning with the John Yu memo, um, all, all the way through, really, there's been this 
there have been warning after warning about the legal problems that might come from this. And at a certain point, the CIA became very, very nervous about it, after the, particularly after the Supreme Court ruled in the Hamden case, that they might be prosecuted for war crimes. I mean, there's, a, there's an anecdote in this book. Um, at one point, Alberto Mora, who was the top lawyer for the Navy, the general counsel, took out a statute book and read it out loud in a meeting and said, you know, you may acknowledge these laws or not, but 